Live from downtown Bakersfield, 23 ABC News starts now. Testing for the coronavirus is now taking place in Bakersfield. What you can expect and the precautions that are put in place. Plus an executive order from the governor will tell you how children might not see the inside of a classroom until next fall. And coming up, we'll tell you which doors are opening early for the most vulnerable during this time. Good morning and thanks for joining us for 23 ABC News at 6 a.m. on this Thursday. I'm Danielle Kernkamp and I'm Mike Hart. Glad you're here. Let's bring in CHP officer Robert Rodriguez right off the bat. Get a look at our roadways at this hour. Robert. Thank you very much, Mike. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, here through town, still a very good traffic commute uh, for this Thursday morning. Again, very quiet out there on our local roadways and freeways. We do have one issue with some uh, uh, railroad crossing arms that are not functioning properly, and this is going to be off of Standard Street at Shell Street. Uh, so just be careful if you're out that way. Uh, but other than that, if you are going to make your travels on our freeways or out of town, so far so good out there. That's my look at traffic. Alyssa, we'll send it back to you. All right, thanks, Robert. Taking a look at our forecast for today, you can see that we are 48 degrees right now here in Bakersfield, about four degrees warmer than we were at this hour yesterday morning. Taking a look at those temperature changes, you can see that they're much warmer in McFarland this morning, about 12 degrees warmer than they were at this hour yesterday. Same story for Button Willow, Taft a lot warmer this morning. And look at China Lake, they're about 11 degrees warmer than they were at this hour yesterday. Uh, taking a look at our forecast highs, though, you can see See that we're going to warm up a pretty good amount here today in Bakersfield. It looks like we're going to be getting to 60 degrees today in Bakersfield, and that's the case for much of the valley up and down the 99 this morning. 57 for your high in Taft and Lake Isabella and in Kernville. It looks like you're going to be hitting 51 degrees today out there in our mountain communities. 45 for your high this morning in Tehachapi. Coming up, we're going to talk more about the possibility of rain that we'll see today on the first day of spring. All right, thank you. Accelerated Urgent Care has opened its doors for testing on the coronavirus in Bakersfield, one of the first medical facilities to do so. 23 ABC's Austin Westfall visited the location on Coffee Road that's open seven days a week to show you how it all works. Accelerated Urgent Care opened its doors Wednesday morning with dozens of people waiting in line, waiting to get tested for the virus that's changed the world. COVID-19's rapid spread around the globe has impacted society in nearly every way imaginable, but so far there's only been one case confirmed in Kern County. Every other state has seen the uptick, so California, uh, this area specifically, is not immune, so I expect the, the exponential increase in cases in the next couple weeks. The CDC says just over 7,000 cases have been reported in the U.S., but health authorities around the nation saying the number is likely much higher because there's been a lack of testing. Officials in Ohio, a state that's had 88 cases confirmed to date, according to CNN, estimating the number of cases in their state was actually around 100,000 last week. Local doctors underlining the importance of mass testing in order to flatten the curve. We're preparing for a large amount of testing so that we can catch cases early because we don't want to underprepare and have a lot of cases moving through the city and don't have the capability to do testing. The number of tests being performed in the country has been increasing. According to U.S. officials, 8,000 tests were conducted in the country on Monday alone. It takes one to three days to get the results back after you've been tested. The 12,600 people we've tested so far in the state of California, 12,600, that we have 3,215 tests that have not yet come back. And for those that might be worried about going to a place like Accelerated Urgent Care over fear of contracting the disease, there are precautions put in place. We've got a booth over here set up that allows people to get a wristband, and we get their cell phone number and they wait in their car uh, for COVID-19 testing. They don't have to wait in a, in a waiting area. And we think that's a great way to keep people separate and, and help coronavirus not spread throughout the city. Testing is free for those with insurance and $55 for those without. The facility is located at 212 Coffee Road and it's open seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Wait time is expected to be about 45 minutes. And that was Austin Westfall reporting. In other news, Gav Governor Gavin Newsom issued an executive order Wednesday afternoon to suspend stand standardized testing for K through 12 across the state. He addressed that and the possibility of school being out for the rest of the academic year. 
uh, that we want to give people assurance that uh, we have the kind of comprehensive uh, set of materials uh, that we have now made available online throughout the districts, uh, those that have closed, the few that remain open, but also available to the public more broadly. Now, this order waives requirements of assessments in mathematics, English language arts, and sciences, but it stipulates that the order must also be approved by the U.S. Department of Education. The governor also issued an order on important services for the most vulnerable residents. The governor saying residents can continue to receive health care, food assistance, and in-home support services in a timely manner. The order extends the eligibility period for those important safety net services as well. And the governor is also committed to spending $150 million on efforts to prevent the COVID-19 virus from sweeping through the homeless community. The Associated Press says California currently has more than 150,000 homeless individuals, the most in the nation, and concerns are growing for those who have no homes to take shelter in. Two thirds of the money will go directly to local governments to spend on homeless services, while 50 million will be used by the state to purchase 1300 travel trailers and to lease hotel rooms to be used for emergency housing. The city of Bakersfield says it's continuing to follow the very latest on the COVID-19 outbreak. City manager Christian Clegg addressed it for the first time on Wednesday. We will get through this, but we are relying on one another to limit the spread of COVID-19 and keep our community safe and healthy. Let's all work together to stay well. Thank you. Public health is a primary concern, according to Clegg, and the city is continuing to take steps to limit the possible spread of the virus. City staff is continuing to work closely with the Kern County Public Health Department, the Office of Governor Newsom, and the Center for Disease Control. Clegg says that the city has not declared a state of emergency at this time and remains open for business. The Bakersfield Police Department is addressing potential scams and unethical practices that might pop up during this pandemic. The department said it would like to remind the community that grocery stores are still open and being restocked as best they can. BPD said there is no expected interruption in the local supply chain of food and household goods, and they say there's no shortage of supplies nationwide. But officials say that some people are out there looking to prey on your fear and profit during this time of uncertainty. Price gouging can be reported to the BPD by going to p3tips.com or simply call the DA's office at 868 2340. With schools and companies throughout the state closed due to the coronavirus, local businesses are doing what they can to remain open. So 23 ABC has compiled a list of all the local restaurants that are still operating. Many of these restaurants have limited their dine-in services and moved to strictly carry out or delivery. Outbacks offering delivery and curbside pickup. Broken Yoke Cafe is offering its curbside service at both Bakersfield locations. And a benefit many of our these restaurants that we have listed on our website have links that take you directly to the page when you can place your order. For more on what's open around town, visit our website, turn to 23.com. And 23 ABC will continue to bring you everything related to the coronavirus on our website, turn to 23.com for all the latest developments, any event postponements or cancellations all over town. Go to our website. Once again, turn to 23.com. This morning, local supermarkets say they will open early to allow seniors to shop without the crowd. 23 ABC's Daniela Garrido joining us live outside one of those participating stores. Daniela. That's right. Good morning. So as we learn more and more about the COVID-19 virus, one thing has remained clear, and that is that the most vulnerable are the elderly. And that's why supermarkets are opening early for those elderly to be able to shop for the necessities that they need without the crowd. So right now we're in front of Vallarta Supermarkets on Niles Street, and we've already seen a couple people come in this morning. They're going to be opening at 7 a.m. till 8 a.m. for those 65 and older, as well as pregnant women and disabled people. Another uh, place that you can go shop this morning is Albertsons on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So today they're going to be opening from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. for those 65 and older, as well as Target is going to be doing this, but only on Wednesday mornings from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. for those 65 and older and those with medical conditions. So as I mentioned, we've already seen about four people lining up right now, but they're going to be opening at 7 a.m. We're going to be here letting you know how everything is going. Of course, we're anticipating long lines, but hoping it doesn't get too crazy over here for the the full list of those stores that are going to be opening early for the elderly. We're going to have that on our website. Turn to 23.com for now. We're live in East Bakersfield. I'm Danielle Garrido, 23 BC News connecting you. 
All right, Danielle, thank you so much for that update. And if you are headed to do some shopping this morning or throughout the day, this is what you can expect. Today we're going to be clear throughout the morning, but come lunchtime, you can expect maybe some scattered showers to be hitting your area. You'll see that's moving through Bakersfield, but it clears out just in the evening there. And then by Friday, we see the conditions are drying out here in Bakersfield. Taking a look at our current temperatures right now, we are at 48 degrees here in Bakersfield, 46 degrees in McFarland, 40s for much of the valley right now this morning. You can see some 20s, some 30s for our mountain communities. Fraser Park, you're still at 20 degrees this morning. Now we're going to take a look at our roadways with CHP officer Robert Rodriguez. Good morning, Robert. Hey, good morning, Alyssa. Well, things are still looking really nice out there for this Thursday morning commute. Uh, not much happening out there on our local roadways or freeways, so good news there. Again, no crashes to report or any major problems, and if you are going to leave town right now is a good time. Uh, your major routes are all open. That's my look at traffic. Mike and Danielle, we'll send it back to you. All right, very good, Robert. Thank you for that. Still to come here at six major shortages for hospitals across the country. We'll tell you what's being done to ensure the needed protective gear they require is restocked. And there are now seven confirmed cases of the coronavirus in Slow County. We'll tell you what officials there are doing to ensure safety. And coming up, a deeper look at what we can expect from county officials amid the outbreak. We'll be speaking with Kern County Sheriff Donnie Youngblood on what's to come. All of this and more straight ahead. Welcome back. Hospitals are facing major shortages and they're racing to reopen and restock supplies. One doctor in Washington says his hospital will run out of protective gear by this weekend, but now car companies may get involved in supplying hospitals. ABC's Kenneth Moten has details. This morning, the next producer of medical supplies in America could be the country's auto industry. Ford and General Motors confirming they're in talks with the Trump administration to make ventilators and other hospital equipment at factories closed because of the virus. The thing that we need on the front lines right now is personal protective gear for uh, my colleagues and myself. Hospitals across the country are already facing a critical shortage of protective gear. Dr. Steven Anderson says his hospital in Auburn, Washington, could run out of supplies by tomorrow. At Putney Health System in Georgia, they ran through six months of protective gear in seven days. Where we thought we were, we were ready, uh, we had no idea um, uh, what, was, what, what, what this has been like. Volunteers are now helping the hospital by sewing covers using surgical sheets to help the mask last longer. We've got an army of seamstresses making these for us in the community, volunteers, people from out of town. We've got more than 50 people making these right now. We think we can make 200,000 of them. To help protect healthcare workers, the federal government is ramping up production of a self swab testing kit. The kits could be sent home where a patient would do a simple nose swab themselves. A technician would then pick up the seal sample. In the meantime, as work on a vaccine continues around the clock, scientists in San Francisco are checking to see if any drugs already approved by the FDA will help fight COVID-19 now. It's basically 24 hours a day of, you know, uh, data flying back and forth. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. As of today, there are no new community spread coronavirus cases in Wuhan, China, where it all began. China's health ministry said that also includes the surrounding province. However, there have been 34 new cases detected in people that are coming in from other countries. Now, this is the first time that no local cases have been reported in Wuhan since the outbreak began. Congress. Two members, Representatives uh, Mario Diaz Ballart and Ben McAdams, have both tested positive. In a statement released by his office, Diaz Ballart, a Florida Republican, said he had a fever and a headache, but he's feeling much better. He also stressed the public needs to take COVID-19, quote, extremely seriously. Meantime, McAdams, a Democrat from Utah, said he is working from home, but still pursuing efforts to get Utahns the, res the resources they need. Diaz, Bullard and McAdams are the first congressional members to become ill from COVID-19. A physicians working with Congress members who may have been exposed to those two representatives. Right now, a program is in the works to push back the due date for your federal tax bill. Taxpayers still need to file by the traditional date of April 15th, but there will be an extra 90 days to pay money owed to the government. Now, this applies to people who owe less than a million dollars and businesses that owe less than 10 million. The new deadline is now to payment for payment, July 15th. 
Some of our surrounding communities are following in the Bay Area's footsteps. Both the city of Fresno and Slow County have issued shelter in place orders. In Slow, the shelter at home order goes into effect today at 5 p.m. It will remain in place until April 17th. In Fresno, it starts tonight at midnight and lasts through March 31st. But there is a long list of exemptions there for essential functions like health care services or shopping for groceries. Fresno has three confirmed coronavirus cases and San Luis Obispo County has seven. All right, let's bring Alyssa in once again, get another check of this first day of spring forecast. Yeah, taking a look at our radar, you can see that this morning we're still in the 40s across much of the valley at 615 AM. You can see, though, that we do have some 20s in Fraser Park in Lebec. You can see on our radar here that rain starting to move into Kern County. Uh, looks like our mountain community is getting some action this morning as well. But taking a look at uh, our future cast here, Gosh, we've been, we've been having a little bit of trouble with our future cast this morning. So let's look at some more temperatures across uh, Kern County. You'll see that we are in the 30s and in the 20s across our mountain communities in Kernville, 22 in Breckenridge this morning. Uh, in Arvin, you are at 43 degrees this morning, 32 degrees in Tehachapi this morning. And take a look at those temperatures in the desert. We are in the 40s out in the desert. 32 in John Bone Canyon, 39 in California City. Uh, and look at Rosamond. You're going to be at 36 degrees right now at uh, 615 this morning. But you guys are all looking to warm up later on. We'll have more on that coming up.